This is the Music History Today podcast for October 18th. On today's show, Zach leaves Rage, the Stone Roses reunite, and Al Green becomes born again by a traumatic event. First up, though, on this date in 1922, the BBC British Broadcasting Company was founded. In 1952, singer Jorge Negreta married actress Maria Felix. In 1957, John Lennon and Paul McCartney performed together for the first time as members of the Quarrymen. In 1961, the movie musical West Side Story premiered. In 1962, Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers recorded their song, Let's Dance. In 1966, the Jimi Hendrix Experience played their first gig, which was at the Novelty in Evro. In 1967, the Disney animated musical film, The Jungle Book, opened in movie theaters. In 1969, the Jackson 5 debuted on television on the show Hollywood Palace, and Rod Stewart joined the group The Faces, which was the new version of The Small Faces after lead singer Steve Marriott left the original Small Faces group to form the group Humble Pie. Get all that? Good. In 1974, Al Green was attacked in his bathtub when a woman poured hot water on him and then killed herself. After recovering from his severe burn wounds, he quit R&B and decided to perform gospel music. And we discuss much more about this incident, along with a lot of other things, on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this channel that you are either watching or listening. Please like, subscribe, and do all that stuff that the algorithm gods tell you to do. In 1975... Paul Simon performed for the first of at least nine times on Saturday Night Live. In 1986, Christine McVie of Fleetwood Mac married keyboardist Eduardo Quintela. In 2000, Zach De La Rocha left Rage Against the Machine. The group would later add Chris Cornell and rename themselves Audio Slave. And of course, Rage has since reunited with Zach and then recently broke up again with Zach. Go figure. In 2008, during the American presidential campaign against eventual President Barack Obama, Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin appeared on a very popular episode of Saturday Night Live. The musical guest was someone whose career got a huge boost in America from her Saturday Night Live performance that very night, Adele. In 2011, four members of the band UB40 were declared bankrupt due to financial problems with the band's record label. Also in 2011, the Stone Roses announced their reunion, and singer and actress Bijou Phillips married actor Danny Masterson. That did not turn out well. In 2014, Joe King of The Fray married actress Candice Acola, and in 2017, the group JBJ was formed. In classical music, in 1752, Jean-Jacques Rousseau premiered his opera Les Devines du Village. In 1855, classical composer Franz Liszt premiered his piece Prometheus. In 1904, Gustav Mahler's Fifth Symphony was played in public for the first time. And in 1946, Aaron Copland premiered his Third Symphony. In theater, in 1939, the Richard Rodgers and Lorenz Hart musical Too Many Girls opened on Broadway. In 1966, the musical Apple Tree opened on Broadway. In 1973, the musical Raisin opened on Broadway. In 1979, the musical Beatlemania premiered in London, England. Also on that same day, Radio City Music Hall reopened after having been closed for renovations. In 1990, the musical Once on This Island closed on Broadway. In 1991, the musical Most Happy Fella closed on Broadway. And in 2001, after runs in Toronto and London, the musical Mamma Mia finally opened on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on October 18th, in 1945, entertainer Paul Robeson won the Spingarn Medal. Albums that were released on October 18th in the UK include in 1993 when Carcass released Heartwork. Meanwhile, in America, in 1970, the James Gang released James Gang Rides Again. 
In 1971, Cactus released Restrictions. In 1974, the Rolling Stones released It's Only Rock and Roll, another big hit for them. In 1977, the Jacksons released Going Places. In 1980, Elton John released The Very Best of Elton John. In 1981, Hawkwind released Sonic Attack. In 1983, the Carpenters released Voice of the Heart. And Daryl Hall and John Oates released Rock and Soul Part 1, The Greatest Hits. In 1984, Frank Zappa released Them or Us. In 1985, The Cult released Love. In 1988, Sonic Youth released Daydream Nation. Paul Simon released Negotiations and Love Songs, 1971 to 1986, which was his greatest hits album. Martika released her self-titled album. Duran Duran released their popular album, Big Thing. In 1989, the Bengals released Everything, and the Smithereens released Eleven. In 1992, Insane Clown Posse released Carnival of Carnage. In 1993, the Cocktoo Twins released Four Calendar Cafe. Iron Maiden released A Real Dead One, and Kenny G released Montage. In 1994, the Go-Go's released Return to the Valley of the Go-Go's. In 1999, Bewitched released Awake and Breathe, and Westlife released Flying Without Wings. In 2000, Alcazar released Casino. In 2001, the Rolling Stones released The Brussels Affair, 1973. In 2004, Simple Minds did a twofer. They released Our Secrets Are the Same and Silver Box. In 2005, Melissa Etheridge released Greatest Hits, The Road Less Traveled. In 2005, same day, Brian Adams released Anthology, Depeche Mode released Playing the Angel, and Rod Stewart released Thanks for the Memories, The Great American Songbook, Volume 4. Also on that same day, Stevie Wonder released A Time to Love, and Supertramp released Retrospectacle, The Supertramp Anthology. In 2010, Huey Lewis and the News released Soulsville, and Queen released the Singles Collection, Volume 4. In 2011, Jane's Addiction released The Great Escape Artist, and Chris Isaac released Beyond the Sun. And in 2013, Polisa released Shulamith. Singles that were released in the UK on October 18th include in 1968 when Jimi Hendrix released All Along the Watchtower, and in 1975, Paul McCartney and Wings released Letting Go in the UK. Meanwhile, in America, in 1969, Creedence Clearwater Revival did a twofer. They released Down on the Corner and Fortunate Son. In 1977, Rush released Closer to the Heart. In 1980, the Ramones released I Want to Be Sedated. In 1982, Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney released The Girl Is Mine. In 1984, Brian Adams released Run To You. In 1990, CNC Music Factory released Gonna Make You Sweat, Everybody Dance Now. In 1994, the Eagles released Get Over It. And in 1999, the Counting Crows released Hanging Around. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 18th include Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Chuck Berry, whose life and career we discuss on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this channel. Please like, subscribe, and all that other sort of fun stuff. Also celebrating birthdays on this date, singer-songwriter Neo, jazz bassist Esperanza Spaulding, singer and actor Zac Efron, Billy Cox, who performed with Jimi Hendrix, rapper Baby Bash, composer Baldessare Galupi, Peter Svensson of the Cardigans, trumpet player Wynton Marsalis, singer Laura Nero, Gary Richrath of REO Speedwagon, Joe Egan of Steelers Wheels, Russ Giguri of The Association, Ronnie Bright of The Coasters, songwriter Cynthia Wheel, 
Dennis Dufert of Girl School, country music singer Riley Green, and singer Andrew Garcia. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 18th include composer John Tavener, who passed away in 1545 at the age of 55. Composer Joseph Ziegler passed away in 1767 at the age of 45. French horn musician Jacques-Francois Gallier passed away in 1864 at the age of 68. Songwriter Eben Rexford passed away in 1916 at the age of 68. Pianist Victor Ullman was killed during the Holocaust at Auschwitz concentration camp in 1944 at the age of 46. Hoppy Jones of the Ink Spots passed away from a brain hemorrhage in 1944 at the age of 39. Composer Federico Gerdes passed away in 1953 at the age of 80. The band leader for the BBC show Radio Rhythm Club, Mr. Harry Perry, passed away in 1956 at the age of 44. Composer Frank Hutchins passed away in 1965 at the age of 73. Saxophonist Lee Allen passed away from cancer in 1994 at the age of 68. Jazz drummer Tony Crombie passed away in 1999 at the age of 74. Singer and actress Julie London passed away in 2000 at the age of 74. Entertainer Gwen Verdon passed away in 2000 at the age of 75. Musician Michelin Ostermeyer passed away in 2001 at the age of 79. Singer Roman Tam passed away in 2002 at the age of 57. Composer Anna Russell passed away in 2006 at the age of 94. Reggae musician Lucky Doobie passed away in 2007 at the age of 43. Pianist Kumiko Ida passed away from meningitis in 2007 at the age of 38. Singer Dee Dee Warwick passed away in 2008 at the age of 63. Pianist Dave McKenna passed away in 2008 at the age of 78. Saxophonist Marion Brown passed away in 2010 at the age of 79. Saxophonist David Ware passed away in 2012 at the age of 62. Pianist Bora Bergman passed away in 2012 at the age of 85. Rockabilly guitarist Roland Janes passed away in 2013 at the age of 80. Singer and model Joanne Borgella passed away from cancer in 2014 at the age of 32. Pianist Randolph Hokanson passed away in 2018 at the age of 103. Guitarist Ayub Bachchu of the group LRB passed away in 2018 at the age of 56. Opera singer Edita Gruberova passed away in 2021 at the age of 74. And singer-songwriter Robert Gordon passed away in 2022 at the age of 75. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 19th, when in 1973, Bob Marley and the Wailers released the protest song, Get Up, Stand Up. Stand Up. 